I am Brian Babu, I am a style creator and celebrity stylist. I develop um, style for personalities and celebrities and even brands like I curate style for them and put together like a perfect image or what works for what they're trying to put out at that specific time. I'm very shy and I'm a very reserved person so I I shy away from anything cameras especially yeah why now why now it's because you are persistent <laughs> first of all and it's good to share your story and your journey with other people so that it inspires them and helps them realize their dreams and their goals I think it, it, it's something that I was brought up with. My mom was a, was sort of a stylist. She used to make clothes for TV anchors back in the day, the likes of Marcio Buru, Christine Guku, Katrin Kasavuli, back in, let's say, 15, 20 years ago. Yes, I think that's where it starts. So I think my mother planted a seed in me for, like, for things that were all style and fashion. So from back, so I've grown up basically being a stylist because I was more drawn to things that were, uh, were more fashion oriented and style oriented uh, throughout. And then I used to practice style among my family members and uh, like my aunts and my siblings. And like I would say, don't wear that. Like you can wear something else. And then I'd put together outfits for them. I used to look and I used to follow and I used to visit her shop and I used to like put like get pieces of fabric from like the the remnants of what she was she was that would be used to make clothes and put like try and sew clothes together I uh, like I started using um, needles and threads when I was about five or six yeah I was able to like make small stitches and things like those yeah I was not I, I was not able to go to fashion school, so I studied economics and finance. Yes, I'm a financial economist. So while I was in campus, you know, when you're in campus and you're trying to make like extra money just to like be able to do some things and maybe get handouts for 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 studies and stuff like that. I started I used to sell clothes. Started selling clothes. I sell thrift clothes. And the, biz the business was very successful. I used to have clients in various offices and buildings in town. Then I decided one day to just try to, well, like a stylist, I wrote to Sunny Dolat and asked him, well, I like styling and I've tried it out, but I'd want to learn a bit more out of it. And I got a call from him like a few months later and he invited me to like do an actual job with him as an assistant and I was being paid so yay then I got my job at uh, I got a job at CMA City Models Africa which it's now called Juma Limited to do styling for their model portfolios that they would present for clients for TVCs and things like those and that's when like, it's all started and started picking up. Then from there, I had met Diana Opoti, and then she invited me. She was doing some. She wanted me to do a certain job. So when we were about to meet, she got another job for Coke Studio. Uh, that's about that. I, that's in about 2015. And then I got to. She asked me if I'd want to like work with her on the project, and I did. And I think that's when now the name started getting out and people started saying, oh, there's this new stylist and he's doing like dope, dope, like dope work and stuff like that. Um, pop culture is growing in Kenya. 
and the culture of dressing up is also coming up strongly and tv personalities and celebrities are now know that they go hand in hand as in for music career or for a public figure to 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 have the whole package they also need to look good and look presentable so styling styling as a career is starting to pick up it's not starting to pick up it's actually picked up and people are more aware that you need someone to dress you and you don't have to do everything by yourself and yeah I think you need to be able to follow your dreams but you also need to be smart about it um, people plunge and they do the degrees or do the courses but then they don't put in the work that is required to be successful in the field they like okay now we have done now we are designers now we can make clothes now we are now I'm a stylist and I and things will come where you have to go and do actually put in the work and and just like reach out to people style them if you're at the beginning of your career style them for free even because if, for you to be known and for you to be out there you need to be able to you need to have body of work um, like it's sad that some people are good stylists but they are good stylists based on how they dress themselves and I feel like you you need to be able to practice your art on someone so that people can see it and then we'll, so that you even you as a person you know how strong you are as a stylist or as a designer I have styled for magazines uh, I have styled for shows I've styled for commercials I've styled for personalities for interviews I've styled for TV shows but more I'm more into like concerts for artists and personalities for TV shows. I think people get it wrong when they think there's a specific formula to like coming up with a specific concert. It's basically inspiration and the energy that the person you're addressing exudes and what direction they want to go to. Because um, for example, if I was telling an editorial, there's a direction I'd want to take. If I'm selling a personality for um, an interview depends on the audience and what they're going to do. If I'm styling a music video, there's a storyline. If I'm doing a concert, there's a look and feel that the, the, the artist would want to, to put out and to show. Or there's a message they'd want to pass out. So it's very... I would not say there's a specific line of thought or creative process that I follow. I go with the vibe of the process i think and everything for me is about vibes it's really about vibes at the end so the vibes really determine how the outcome of what i'm doing is very important to allow people to to be themselves especially when you're working with designers and photographers and makeup artists I am that one person who tells you what do you feel like what do you feel what what are you looking for as well from this from what you're doing I feel like every time you start dictating things to people they sort of don't become themselves and they don't give the output is not as great unless you are trying to achieve a very specific goal then I I leave it up to them like I just allow them to thrive and even stores very on very few occasions will I dictate what they should sell or what they should bring if we are, we are working together if they're partnering I very few times I need to I work with what they bring and what their store stands for instead of pretty much dictating what she, they should bring in stock and what they should have. Styling pays, but you need to put in the work. I am not for the idea or the notion that styling is a glamorous job. It's not. It really isn't. And People think that you wake up and you snap your fingers and the clothes arrive and you're like on set and they are like people just 
waiting it's it's not what people think it is styling requires a lot of time first of all when just just to come up with ideas just to like even develop what you want to do and getting what what you want also takes a lot of time and you have because that i end up have like my signature dressing is black because every time i have to let's go down and i have to go downtown i have to go and thrift somewhere i have to be on a motorbike at some point like it's very it's a very hands-on kind of career and if you're not really willing to be hands-on you'll not be as, as successful and you will also not make the money you cannot live off it if you're not hands-on and you're not hard working the final product and the look on the faces of the clients like it's it's priceless like you do all this and then when you see the client where and the smiles on their faces and when people are tell, commending them and they're telling them you look so nice like this outfit is fantastic this outfit is bomb and like it's just like it's like i can't really explain how it feels when the client is very happy and sometimes you you put in work and they look at themselves and some of them even shed tears of joy you know so that's really sometimes you have points in your career when you feel like you'd want to quit because it gets it gets a bit hectic like at some point you work and then you completely don't have a social life also at some point it takes a bit too long for work to to let to just for there to be work so yeah sometimes it's hard I really love, I really, really love what I do. Like, I, I, I've tried seeing myself doing something else, and I don't, like I can't relate to it. So I really do love what I do. So that's what keeps me going. When I dressed Saudi Soul for the mamas and the one, that was like, that was a highlight. That was a highlight. When my name was recognized among the top stylists in Africa for like an award, like, an, like just the fact that I was considered and put on the list, that meant something, you know. Yeah, so yeah, it meant like I'm doing the right thing and I'm where exactly where I'm supposed to be. I just don't get into projects just for the mere fact that they pay. I get into projects that I'm actually passionate about and that I feel I feel lead up to something or mean something at the end. Creative block is one of them when you are not really sure what you want to what you want to do when it comes to a specific project. Time we are always always pressed for time, always have tight deadlines. And I think sometimes you are also the other thing, sometimes you're caught up in the motion of work that you lack time for yourself because it's, it, it can be back, sometimes it just can be back to back and you're continuously doing project after project, project after project. So it's important sometimes to just pull back and breathe then continue. Personalities that I love, love, love. Uh, I really love to. I really love to meet Andre Leon Tali. He is. Um, he's just amazing. Like I don't. I love the work he's done over the years as a fashion journalist and even the shoots he's been able to style and his work as editor at large for Vogue. Like that was. I. I really do love him and the background around him and how he got to where he is is just an amazing story. One person I've really wanted to work with for the longest time is Tiny Temfer. Uh, I think he has amazing style. Uh, the other person I really, 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 really want to work with also is, um, I don't know if I'll ever get to, but dreams are valid, right? 
I'd want to work with DMC. For real, for real, for real. Like I'd really want to work with her. Yeah. Why? It's Beyonce. <laughs> like can't be how like she's like she's an amazing artist. She's really she really is amazing and she also has she's an amazing creative as well. So I think working with her would be extremely, extremely interesting. Internationally, I've worked with, well, basically, all the artists who have, who have ever been in Cook Studio, um, from Yemi to, to well, Mikasa, um, Ali Kiba, I've worked of basically part of ranking, um, wow, and then like apart from Cook Studio, like I've been able to work with um, what's his name, what's his name? I've worked with um, Mr. Easy, I've worked with Diamond, I've worked with uh, with Ice Prince. That is like the list is in Canon, like. Wow, in Kenya, the question would be, who haven't I been able to style? Um, so I've worked with Salty Soul, I've worked with um, Shinsky, I've worked with uh, Amina, Janet Mokwa, this is uh, Anabelo Nyango, Atemi, Naiboy. Like, the list is just continuous, continuous, continuous. Adele Nyango, I've worked with um, Della, I've, like, I've worked with very, very, very many artists in Kenya and personalities. At some point it puts a lot of pressure on me as a creative because I, I only, I constantly have to be on the next level and knowing what what is in and what is not and what is what what like what is the like what next and what and uh, anticipate and always be on what that what has not been done before you know so it's it's a constant back to back and like even the personalities you work with they expect like out of this world out of the box I am always researching, I'm always, I'm constantly looking for inspiration everywhere, like even when I'm walking down the street, um, current events, I'm always trying to find inspiration from everything and every situation and everything, yeah. If I was to dress someone for the Met Gala, it really depends on the theme, it really does, yeah. Depending on the theme of the year and who the person is. Currently, I'm working with a team. Um, I have a team of two people, so I'm hoping that I grow that side of business into a proper, fully fledged styling styling agency. And personally, as me as a as a stylist, five to ten years, probably will be operating in a bigger market, or I'll be more of a global styling brand than just being an East African or African styling brand, yeah. I just be myself, man. Like, I always have to be myself. I don't want to be... I know people... The market is big enough to accommodate as many stylists. You just always... You have to be true to yourself and true to your craft. Because... You can't start thinking, oh, oh, there's this stylist, I need to start doing things the they're doing. Or, like, the cake is big enough. The cake is big enough. I love being anonymous. Well, I'm not really anonymous, but I love being anonymous. I love people when people don't know. I, I prefer people knowing the name than actually the person. And I think that's important for my brand, my name, not who I am. Well, I have siblings. Um, I have, yeah, I have siblings, I have sisters, and I have brothers, and they are always very supportive of what I do, and they are around, we, I try being around them as, as possible, as much often as I can. I, on, during my free time, I stay in my house, 
I listen to music, I watch movies. Um, when there is enough time, I travel and go out of town. I try to visit the village, I try to visit the coast, um, just to like um, cool off from the busy environment that is. Also, I love cooking. Yes, I do love cooking. I host friends and family at my place for like meals and stuff like that. For individuals who are coming into the industry and do your research, do your research, work hard and work smart also. And just try always presenting, present yourself as the best version of you. Don't have asked things, don't like do the least, do the most, do the most, it always goes a long way. It's not really for celebrities, you can get stylists who can help you, but the most important thing you need to do is always be comfortable. Yeah, go for comfort. Always, always, always go for comfort. I personally say I am a pioneer of what celebrity and personality styling is now. Because when I started, the only way people could work with stores was when you, if you are working with a magazine or affiliated to a newspaper or a publication, basically. So f I started and I started approaching like designers first, then slowly started being approached by I, like I approached one or two stores and then started the st like stores started approaching me, started want wanting to work with me, started to ask me if I could use their clothes for my shoots and for my the things I was doing and I started writing to also other other stores and brands. Yeah. I do mood boards so that like as a guideline to what I want executed. I get involved with them in the process of like coming up with an outfit if we are developing it and like we go through the fabrics together, we go through like what works and I also listen to them to, to listen to what they want in terms of how how could would, how it would work best when it comes to execution. Styling is not glamorous at all. At some point you're on your knees, uh, like putting clothes on people. So people look at it on Instagram and they're like, this is something I could do. Sometimes you have to get you get clothes and then, and then they don't fit and you have to like come up with a contingency. So it's not it's not glam. Spelling is not glam. Yeah. <laughs>